So first of all, uh, we'll uh, speak about undergraduate screening of packaging contaminants in food, but mainly I will focus on the unknown parts. So my outline will be introduction, then we go to the analytical strategy, where I make the data processing, some interpretation, next step and conclusion. So what is a supply chain in our purpose? So as you can see here, we have different, different uh, people, different steps in the, time in the supply chain. And uh, we start with the chemistry. And for the chemistry, we know very well what is a monomer, oxidant, pigments. It's not a problem of knowledge. And going down to the chain, we see that the complexity increase and the knowledge decrease. So on the top or, or at the end of the day, for our finished products, we lose a lot of knowledge. And even more, when we interact the food products with the package, it's really difficult to, to know about the interaction between the chemistry and the food. So as I mentioned, this uh, supply chain is quite complex to, to manage. We have many actors and we decrease the lack of knowledge during the different steps. And uh, for us, it's very difficult to convey the end user to give us any information. Most of the time, all the recipes are secret or with IPs, and we are really fishing with unknown all the time. Furthermore, we have also a lack of national regulation. There is no very good regulation worldwide, even we have national regulation and uh, as a food company worldwide it's quite difficult to manage all this regulation together but still for we find a lot of unknowns there is no regulation but still we have to make a, a, um, assessment about the, the, the safety to give any results for the end consumer so what is really a package May I? So this is a <laughs> bottle. So as you can see on the screen, even if it's a so thin a wall, we have different layers. You could have different part of plastic. In between, you will add an adhesive to glue it together. You can have printing inks. You can have sca scavengers in, into this thin layer of bottle. To know what is the composition of this bottle, we will cut a piece and what we dissolve on the solvent. This is what is present in the packaging. But it's not enough. Now we have to know what will migrate in the water, coming from the packaging to the water. And that's the migration. To do the migration, we will put some solvent into the bottle, wait for a couple of days in certain condition, and to look what will be migrating into the food. Thank you. <laughs> now, as you can imagine, we have a lot of different packaging, plastic, paper and boards, metal coatings, printing inks, adhesive, and so forth and so on. On top of that, we have all the substances which is regulated, means authorized, and the unknowns. It's quite funny because we just have, in the previous uh, talk, uh, discussion about MZ Cloud, all the databases, but for us, MZ Cloud and databases are there. And we are looking for that. You could imagine the number of unknowns, the real unknowns we can find, hopefully. So, what could be the, the good strategy to look for unknowns? We have different substances, some are authorized. Some, ta some are really unknowns. We have contaminants. We have the food ingredients could be a large part of, of our sample at the end. So uh, this is what I propose as a workflow. I hope you will challenge me at the end. I will try to explain you a bit in details. So first of all, as I mentioned, I will take this bottle. I will take the solvent side, and then I will 
concentrate the all the, the solvent into one piece, one ml. And this will be my food extract. Then I will use this food extract to spike some food, one with the spiking level and one without. Then I will make some acquisition, have the chance to have dif different uh, techniques. I use the SCHRMS, of course. I use the GC, FID, HRMS, and GC uh, uh, PCI, chemical ionization. On top of that, I couple a CAD, it's a charge aerosol detector, to be able to make kind of semi-quantitation with, with unknowns. With all this acquisition uh, data, then I will try to process it. Also, different way to process. Of course, I can make semi-quantitation with CAD. I can make semi-quantitation with FID, which was common. And then on top of that, I will try to make interpretation. So for the FID, we will have the iteric impact of the chemical ionization, which is known, and we have already libraries to do so. And for the LC part, I will use the CAD to make out of that a positive list. Even if it's completely unknown, I will have a positive list. And I will use this positive list to use with TraceFinder and to make accurately the, the um, integration and possibly also the semi-quantitation. Then, at the end, we'll try to make interpretation of these unknowns. And if we have a chance to find one, which is not a chance at the end, to, to say, OK, it's good to have it, but how much will be present at the end in the food? So this is in details of the process. As I mentioned, I will make an extract. I will concentrate it. And then I will make a concentrated extract of my mixture. Then I will use it different ways. One, to directly inject to know the 100% of my compounds coming from the bottles. And I will also take the blank food. Uh, that means a, a food which is not in contact with the, the product, with the package. One in contact with and one with contact with, with the spiking mixture. And then we make um, precious extraction. I have my four years at the end and I will make the acquisition. Then the acquisition. This is an example of uh, food similar migration extract. This is not in food. So three different acquisition, the CAD, the positive I raise the negative I, I raise. So I did a C, uh, on the C8 acquisition of food scan post neck switching at the same time. And I make a variable data dependent in, uh, acquisition, VDA, not MS2. So this is uh, an old QE, it's a QE classic. And also I make uh, with the, our GC or trap FID. Impact electro uh, electronic impact and ionization, chemi chemical ionization, sorry. And then I will process these six profile with a different software. Again, Chameleon, Compound Discover, and Trice Finder. So but today I will focus only on the LC part. So Compound Discover, everybody knows about Compound Discover now. So I use, as mentioned, full scan post switching with VDA fragmentation. For some nodes, I have expected compounds. That means I have the structure already. And uh, for the rest, we use a Temo Extractor Reachable uh, database. We have also our own database. We have all, almost 3,000 compounds, which are untarget, but un not unknowns. But we are not using online libraries because most of the time, if you remember the, the iceberg, uh, we never find the unknown in, in that list. 
So to be able to be quite efficient in terms of uh, expectation of the, the compound discover, we are using the blank, the food blank, as a blank. So I, I extract all the ingredients from the food to the, to the acquisition. So I will have normally only the, the compounds which, coming, which are coming from the, the package. So how can may I generate a positive list? Again, thanks to Compound Discoverer and thanks to the filtration, I can, I can uh, be able to extract relevant information for, for in our particular case, I just select the most, the 100 most intense peak. For some, I, I have already some couple of hits to know because of the fragmentation. I know that it is of could be of phthalate, for instance, but it's not very important because uh, we are really looking for unknowns. And with this list, I will apply this list for further application into food. For doing that, I will apply on Trace Finder. I like Trace Finder because it's really accurate. We have a very, very good integration process because it's, it, it is um, <coughs> created for making targeted analysis. So everything is green, all my fragments and all my exact mass are correct. And then I will be able to make interpretation. So, how we can interpret that? It's a long journey, <laughs> even for unknowns. Our, the, 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 our workflow is to use compound discover with in silico fragmentation using a mass frontier. Of course, with the exact mass and the alex will help a lot. We, we also have internal databases and library if, if necessary. And uh, so we are using CFIDER to give us to the possibility to, uh, to dive in the organic chemistry and to see uh, what will be uh, linked to the possible candidate. And uh, time to time also looking for with MZ Cloud. But now we can use also the GC HMS part because we have, we have already information. We have the electronic impact with high, high rays, meaning we can find some fragments. Can find some fragments. Yes, we have the chance to, to use a GC HRMS to be able to, to couple the LC part with the GC part, meaning all these three peaks, fortunately, are present also in the LC uh, spectra, meaning with this formation, we can, uh, orthogonally speaking, confirm by uh, with the LC. So now, semi quantitation because we just ask all the time, okay, you find some peaks, but what is the level? Because it's very important to make a risk assessment at the end, we should know what is the level. So as you probably know, the Ionization by MS is not linked to it's not proportional to the to the con concentration. That's the reason we include the CED charge aerosol detector as a universal detection system. And the idea is to so my, my work is ongoing. Is the work is to try to combine all this three information. So I, as you can see by trace finder or by compound discover, we receive almost the same results. And on the top of that, we can also integrate the FID signal into this table to be able also to compare the four signals in terms of quantification. Again, we will use this in example, we will use these three most uh, abundant peaks, and we will see if the results are aligned or harmonized over these three different uh, possibility of uh, quantitation. So, next step. The idea is to really to try to push this semi-quantitation using the CAD. Of course, the CAD is working when you are working without food, because of course, you can imagine the number of hits, the whole number of peaks we can reach with 
with, uh, with the food, but nevertheless, by using the, the mixture, the standard mixture, we will be able to know the quantity by high and then to come back to the food and to see, to make some quantitation out of it. Then to compare the different um, semi quantitation techniques, FID, HRMS, or CAD. And of course, you apply this workflow to different packed food samples. So my conclusion, so uh, I hope that you, you will trust on my workflow to uh, work on unknowns for quantitation and identification. Of course, compound discovery is really key for unknown analysis. We are working part of it only on, on this workflow, but definitely for me it's a really, really added value. And I'm looking forward using also Mass Frontier 8 to help us to go in that direction. TraceFinder and Chromelion are very suitable tools in combination to make the semi quantitation. And finally, I will uh, thank you, my, all my team, and you for your attention. <laughs>